really hurtful to the people of this country in general as we become further detached and removed from the tragedy and the consequences of warfare. But I think what, what really compels me to get involved in this work, uh, um, in this anti-drone work, is, is the suffering and death of, of so many people in Pakistan, in Afghanistan, Somalia, Yemen, all the places that the U.S. is using drones. And um, drones have become a really big focus around the country now for, for a lot of peace activists. And one thing that we just feel like we really need to put our energy here because of the suffering of, of so many people. We're causing unimaginable grief to mothers and fathers and sons and daughters whose loved ones have been murdered by the U.S. government. Uh, one of the ways that Obama can say that, that drones provide precision strikes is that, and, um, and that they don't kill civilians is that he claims that any military age male between the age of 18 and 65 is a terrorist. Um, is and can be killed. So if you use that criteria that you could, it's okay to kill any male between the age of 18 to 65, then um, you know it's easy for him to make a claim that we don't kill innocent people. This same study that was mentioned by Stanford and New York University Law School says that in actuality only 2% of those killed are so-called high-level targets. So um, it's really hard to get accurate numbers on how many people are killed because our government doesn't tell us. They, they keep that information from us. Recently, Representative Lindsey Graham said that, said that 4,700 people have been killed by drone strikes. That's the first number we've ever gotten from anyone in our government. But then, then Representative Graham went on to heartlessly say, sometimes you hit innocent people, and I hate that, but we are at war. And, um, you know, I would argue these are illegal wars that we should not even be involved in. But to just say that it's okay to, to kill innocent people is just, is just unbelievable. Um, the latest reports from the Bureau of Investigative Journalism say that up to 3,500 people have been killed by drone strikes. And um, this is in Pakistan alone. And 196 of these are children. Can you imagine what people in this country would do if 196 of our children were killed? These are not, these children are not any different. They're loved by their parents just as our children are. Um, you know, and some of them are just, just babies and one, two, three years old. In some cases, brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers of the same family are killed with just one or two survivors. And so it's just, to me, I think it's so important that we remember that behind these numbers are real people. They have names and they have a family that loved them. The people um, who are killed have not been charged, they've not been tried, they've not been convicted of any crime. They're summarily being murdered by our government and still the use of drones is increasing. How safe are any of us gonna be around the world with this going on? We're creating enemies with this killing on demand. Their deaths ordered by our president. And I believe we all have blood on our hands. And so we have to decide what we're going to do about this. And as an activist, that's what I think is really important. And I, um, there's another, um, if you look at the back of the bibliography, if you have that handout, there's, um, there's getting involved. There's different things you can do to get involved. Uh, we have monthly vigils at a military base in Wisconsin where they do training um, for pilots on the shadow drones. And in May, we're going to be doing an action there where we're going to be risking arrest. I know that's kind of a long way for you to drive all the way up there, but um, any of you are welcome anytime. Um, it's, you can also be organizing vigils in your own community, which I've talked to to some of you, and I guess you do have, there's a Friday afternoon vigil every month, every week, and so just getting involved that way. Um, different communities are, are developing anti-drone resolutions, either at the, the city level, the county level, or the statewide level. There's information here on how you can get involved in that, you know, sample models that you can use. Um, I know there was, I think there was a county supervisor at Rosita's earlier. That might be something that, that you might be interested in, in pushing. Um, 
And there, there were um, a group of people that got together in New York City in last December and um, created kind of a coordinating group. They're calling for days of action in April. And um, first focusing on companies that manufacture drones, then focusing on drone research, and then third, focusing on military bases with drone activities. So I think it's, you know, to, I think it's really um, more powerful people getting together all around the country and, and just doing something together. It, it gives us a lot more than just, you know, little pockets here and there. So to have these coordinated actions is really important. Uh, so I, I think that that's what we really need to do. We really need to get out in the streets and, and let people know what's going on and, um, and call for an end to this. I'm more than happy to, to help anybody who's interested in this think about ideas for your communities or whatever you want to do. But um, there, my contact information is on this getting involved sheet. And um, feel free to call me or email me or um, talk to me afterwards. Thank you. Well, thank you for your inspiring words. And uh, we'll hear our next speaker now, whoever would like to go next. I guess that's me. <laughs> Please reintroduce yourself. Hi everyone, my name is John. Um, I was invited here tonight because I guess I am the opposing side in many ways, but it's that's kind of a misnomer, I guess, because um, I guess I support and oppose drones. That's kind of my stance. So. A little background on me, I'm a, sociolo a senior sociology major here, a minor in Southeast Asian studies, and a focus on nonprofits. Um, I also, prior to coming to NIU, spent six years in the U.S. Army, so I was a soldier on the, in the wars in both in Afghanistan and Iraq, and uh, so I have a little bit of, I guess, experience in warfare, um, which is, I guess, a good or bad thing to say, depending on how you look at it. Um, I had to do a little homework tonight, because although... I was in the military. My experience with drones is kind of somewhat limited. I have a few friends that I guess you could say are in training or and even one that has flown them. So I had to do some phone calls and do a little homework. And so I hope that my statistics are correct and my facts are somewhat correct. Um, so I guess what I've been hearing is I kind of wanted to go at least somewhat towards the end, so I kind of got that a little bit, just so I could kind of gauge on where people were going to come from, because there's many aspects to drones that I guess are looked at, both legality and whether or not wars are justified or not justified, and how you're going to use technology. So I guess from my personal standpoint is that I look at I'm going to both talk about, I guess, how I support it, I guess. Um, as a soldier on the ground, I mean, we use all sorts of technology, whether it's tanks or aircraft or rifles even. That's, although somewhat might not think that that's high-tech technology, the very fact that we use rifles is somewhat high-tech. Um, From the standpoint, I guess that you could say that we've used technology, advancements in technology to fight wars since the beginning of the United States. I mean, if you go back to the Civil War and to the Revolutionary War, and the Civil, in the Revolutionary War, we were the first to adopt somewhat rifles and to increase accuracy and to prolong our weapons in, in the process of war. Um, if you jump on up to the Civil War, we were the first to start realizing that we could use cartridges and self-contained weaponry. So it kind of shows a historical perspective that technology has always been used to, whether or not, increase war or, in a very mundane sense of the word, make it more efficient. Um, so in the 21st century, I mean... One can argue that 
the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan are not justified or they are justified, um, that's up for you to decide. I'm not going to stand here and tell you that the wars are justified. From my perspective, I was asked by my country to go fight the wars. Um, it was, I mean, although a few pre presidents put us there, it was the United States that ultimately felt that it was in Americans' best interest to fight wars. Um, it was a pretty much a voter-led thing. I mean, you elect your representatives and you send your soldiers to war. That is how it works. Um, so I was in Iraq in 2005. Um, I was in and out of Afghanistan. I had multiple jobs. I was a military police officer, which kind of means we're the kind of very broad spectrum what our job descriptions are. Um, I have personal experience. I guess I saw the drones. I mean, it, there's this kind of misnomer that drones are these secretive things that they're on secret bases all over the world. But they pretty much fly on just any base where an aircraft can land. I mean, we saw them throughout Iraq, and uh, if I remember right, I even saw one in Afghanistan. I have pictures. I mean, I'm a, I was not exactly a high-ranking officer in the military, but I did have troops underneath me for a while, and I mean, I flew into many bases. Um, You know, I, I kind of looked at some facts and statistics, and although I'm not necessarily sure that, I mean, as people were saying, that it's hard to get accurate numbers, but both the United Nations and an organization based in Washington, D.C., the New American Foundation, have stated that the statistics, or at least the numbers that they can come up with, are that um, between... Since 2000, and okay, all right. Well, um, since 2004, most of them during President Obama's thing, but regardless of who is president, it doesn't. To me, it's still the same. Whether it's President Obama or President Bush, I mean, responsibility lies with the government. So, um, between 2004 and since then between 1,963 and 3,293 people have been killed by drone strikes. That comes from, that's the visit comes from both the United Nations and the New America Foundation. So you can fact check it if you like, you can search, but those are the numbers that I pulled from a couple days worth of research. Uh, it's estimated that in Pakistan, those numbers, 1,953 and 3,279 people since 2004 have been killed. And of that number, 18 to 23%, according to the statistics that I pulled, though 20, 18 to 23% of those were not militants. So it gives you some, I guess, some perspective on who's being killed by drone strikes. I know a lot of statistics are thrown out and a lot of facts are thrown out there, but those were the numbers that I pulled. So. From my perspective as a soldier, in war, there's always casualties. There are people on the ground that get caught in the midst of war that are going to be casualties. It's happened in every war. There's not one war you can find that there have never been civilian casualties. So from my perspective, that's a bad number in itself, but it comes in the midst of war. And you know, that's since September 2001. There has been a group of people that we've been at war with. I mean, it's hard to define because they're not scattered in both Afghanistan or Iraq. They've been scattered all over the globe. And if you're going to target them, I mean, you can't go rage war in every country. So technology has been a very beneficial thing, I guess, to the soldiers on the ground. I mean, it's saved, I guess the statistics, the numbers are never ran on how many soldiers and how many civilians were saved by drones. And you, it's hard to find those statistics. And if you can, show me, please, because I'd love to see them. Because I know personally that I benefited from drones. So, you know, I mean, when I was on the battlefield, I mean, it was the drone cameras and the technology and people flying those things that I relied on when I went into different ba to different areas where I had to fight. So um, I guess from my anti-opposing thing, 
you know, a lot of media attention recently has been paid attention to the president and his reality. From my standpoint, I believe that if a country asks its soldiers to go to war, that the decisions on the use of military technology should be led to the mil should be left to the military commanders. It's up to the president to decide to go 